and baffle omnidirectional speakers like mag- Magnapan, etc. Hard to measure accurately and or thoughts on these types? Oh, that's an Aaron question. Yeah, they're not hard to measure. There's really no difference in how you measure those versus how you measure anything else. Sure. Okay. Easy enough. Yeah. I, I, okay. Well, one second. Back to that question for a second. Okay. If you were to measure a, an MBL speaker, I've said it before. MBL speaker. Yeah, the omnidirectional one. All right. Let's just say, let's say they use DSP and the on axis is on axis, wherever that is, right? Is yeah. flat. Right. But what if everywhere you sound is also flat? around it yeah because if it's true omnidirectional yeah yeah then so what's flat the, all around right so right. now it's, your it's inner response is flat does that sound it's good? straight but you but possibly but, but we've said that that flat is going to sound too bright right does that only apply to normal speakers uh monopole speakers yeah for sure uh dipole speakers think about it but all of them are going to have a bass bump just because of the room itself Right, you're going to get boundary loading from the base. I'm with you on that. With you on that, yes. Yeah, but as far as the high frequency goes, I just I don't know. I honestly don't know what would be preferred in that case. I'm just yeah. wondering if it would, for some reason, because it's an omnidirectional speaker, even if it was a flat uh, in room response, would it for some reason sound okay? For some reason, yeah. I don't. I don't have the answer to that. Yeah, I don't either. I mean, I have some experience with some things that are close to it, but I've not experienced a, a truly omnidirectional speaker that is of, you know, like the, I don't want to say high five variety, but it's not an Apple box or it's not an Amazon Echo little thing. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I just outside of that, I really just don't know. So what has your experience been with like... um what do you say? Open baffle? And yeah, yeah magna pans. Um, so the open baffle ones are are different because they're still forward radiating. Um they're open on the back side, but they still the bend, right? Like so it the, the difference between an open baffle versus a um What's the word? Uh, an omnidirectional speaker is the open baffle still radiates more force, especially because it has a baffle. Um, I was going somewhere with this, but I got thrown off because I was looking. Well, at the- there's uh, the cancellations at the sides. Right. I'm just I'm thinking more in terms of the high frequency roll off. You're still going to have that because that mm-hmm. that tweeter, even if it's open to the back. Most of them are chambered, so the rear radiating sound waves are not actually going out to the rear. That's why. Uh, Linkwitz's design has two tweeters, one forward and one rear facing. So to give you that true dipole type effect, but that's still not quite omnidirectional either. So something like the MBL, uh, there probably are other speakers that are true omnidirectional, but the MBL is the first one that comes to mind. At least that's how they market it. Now, I haven't heard it, so I don't even know if that's true or not. And then something like the Bale Lab 90, I think you can set that up to be omnidirectional or you can contour the radiation pattern to be narrow or wide because i believe um uh what's his name there there's a term for it S- sound soundmeister is that right sound is that you're talking tone about meister? tone meister um tone for, tone winner tone no not that's not it oh god tone meister it's the, it, basically like, correct. This, this is how this thing should sound it's supposed to like the golden ears of the uh of the company or the the hobby. What's his name? George? Is it George? Not George Martin. That's somebody else. Jeff Martin, I think is his name for B&O. Anyway, he sends out emails. If you're subscribed to his newsletter, he sends out emails and they're very technically in-depth. Like The majority of the stuff that I read from him, I'm like, I have no idea what you're talking about. But one of them, they covered the directivity of the bail lab. And he actually provided like polar plots with it and said, You know, this is what it looks like when you have it set to narrow mode or wide mode or omnidirectional mode. It was pretty interesting. So I say that to say, I believe the Bale Lab 90 is also a true omnidirectional capable speaker, but it can also be tweaked. And that's why I'd like to hear that one, because I would like to hear it in the different modes. Like, what's it sound like when it's omni? What's it sound like when I start closing it in and then make it basically just shoot a beam out the front? That's a really neat speaker. I'm trying to look at this. Uh, 
There's one measurement of an MBL speaker. Uh, is it like an actual worthwhile to look at measurement? Uh, it like it's from Stereophile. Mm, okay, they do listening window. <laughs> but I'm more interested in like, is it truly omnidirectional? You know, um, like is it? I think it is. I think they're supposed to be truly omnidirectional. This one, but I don't is, know. This one that they reviewed is the one where the top part is. It's not like the whole part on the bottom. Yeah, is it's yeah. the top. It's like their bookshelf version. <laughs> yeah, crazy. I, I mean, shoot them an email and see. I doubt they get anyone, but that would be awesome. Yeah, it's this one. They reviewed this one, right? Yeah, the, the thing is, dude, that looks like Darth Vader. This thing looks cool though. And there's, I don't think that's not omnidirectional because you got the wolf on the side, right? The or top. is that the enclosure? Okay, so the bottom just, part, the enclosure. I'm guessing. What did they say? Taking care of business above 650 hertz is MBL's exclusive 360 degree dispersion of middle and high frequencies, 650 and up. Uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Those things look silly. <laughs> they look wild, man. They look like little people. I like it. They it looks like cool. make me think of like Oompa Loompa or something. Yeah, or like the store. It's total stormtrooper. So like, <laughs> I just thought of Darth Vader as soon as I saw it. Um, what am I looking at here? Looking for measurements. Uh oh, these are normalized. Zero. Only up to 15 degrees. Oh, there. What are these? Zero. Yeah, that's Omni. Okay. Because look at all of those. They're all the same. So basically, that's saying that it measures all around, well, however far out he goes, at least, the same. Whoa. What? That CSD plot. That's a... Uh... Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I CSD plots are are a weird thing for me. So here's the here's the thing though. Like above what they said, six hundred fifty to six. That doesn't look too bad, honestly. I mean, it, it looks. I think I expected worse. It's it's flattish though, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, so, so is that the window, or is that his uh, listening window one, or is that just the quasi anechoic on axis measurement? Yeah, anechoic response. Um. Okay, so, and then the base boost is not real, by the way. That it would not look like that with a true anechoic measurement. That base okay. boost is a function of how he measures it, which he measures mm -hmm. in the near field. And mm -hmm. when you do, when you put the mic right up to the driver, you essentially have no, or it's you don't have baffle steps. So essentially, you have an infinite baffle. Mm -hmm. So what manufacturers of speakers do, or designers of speakers do, is when you get away from the speaker the sound that radiates to the speaker also wraps around. So you lose SPL um, due to the baffle itself not being infinite, right? So that's where we get the term infinite baffle. Mm -hmm. that, that means that the wall fully loads that low frequency. But in, when you have a real baffle, like a, a speaker baffle, you don't have all that loading anymore. So long story short, that's why the graph that you see is so boosted on the base. That's not real. It's real via the way that he's measured it, but that's not what you would get from a real anechoic measurement. So I find this fascinating, though, because the, the top end where it's omnidirectional looks like they're trying to go for a flattish response. And, th and, and that makes sense to me. I'm, I'm a little bit concerned when you're paying that much money for a speaker that it drops so quickly. <laughs> high frequency, though. Over here? Well, they can't yeah. hear that. If you can afford well, MBL. 16, I mean, it just falls like a rock. If, you've, if you can afford MBL... Yeah, you right. You probably can't hear that anyway. You yeah, I hear you. <laughs> You're probably old. <laughs> good point. So, I, it, you it know, just, I really uh, don't know that it would matter for most music, but that's just kind of surprising that, yeah. So I that in really like response is going to be, is, is going to be flat. It's if they're all flat. similar like this, like it's showing, yeah, yeah. that estimated in room response is going to be flat. They could have made this have a downward slope. If you can afford this. To. But they chose not to. Right. So, well, also, and that's not anything against them. But we can't give them too much credit without understanding. Like we're we're assuming that they chose not to because it sounded better. But you may hear it and you may still think it's bright. We don't know that yet, right? 
I don't know, man. People dance when the in their videos, so you know. I dance in my videos. I, I think that's all the all their videos is like somebody dancing in it. I mean, I dance in my own videos. I'm gonna I'm shoot them an email, and I'm. I don't want to watch those videos at all, dude. I would totally watch that one. I want to see y'all. Y'all miss my old one where I dressed up in a in a Superman PJs, a Superman onesie. I saw you in a wig or two. Once. Yeah, I did that, but I had a Superman onesie in one of them a long time ago. That was I, not, like I didn't that. need to watch any more of that. <laughs> Now, if you can't catch the show, we do have an audio version at anchor.fm slash daily hi-fi. So make sure to go on over there if you like to listen to the show.